Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this pretty butterfly card. I've used the Vine Design stamp set together with the Coordinating Flowering Vine dies. And I've also used the Brilliant Wings dies, which are a new product coming in our annual catalogue next month but have been released early. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for all the elements required to create this project. So if you're interested in reproducing it, take a screenshot so you can refer to it later. Here is the Vine Design stamp set and today I'm using the Thank You Sentiment. I'm using my Stamparatus for the stamping and I'll be stamping on normal weight basic white cardstock. I'll position my stamp and then pick it up with the plate. I'm going to stamp using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink and I'll stamp and then over stamp this sentiment to get a nice intense black. I'm going to punch out the sentiment using the new double oval punch. I just need to cut my cardstock down so I can position it. And then I'm going to use the scalloped oval at the top and punch this from a scrap of basic black. I'm using one of the flowering vine dies to create a stencil and it's this rectangular floral panel die. I'm going to show you a couple of ways to make this stencil and I'm starting with the fiddliest of them. Now I've got some masking sheet here which is on acetate. It's self-adhesive on the back. Now the die won't cut through the acetate cleanly so I'm going to transfer the masking sheet to some waxed paper and then I can place the die on top. Now this masking sheet is thin, it's like tissue paper if you've got something thicker, it will work better in this case. It will die cut nicely and then you can remove the mask from the die. And then you can remove the edge if you want to. Be very careful if you're using the same type of masking paper because it's so thin. Then all you need to do is poke all the bits out and that's the fiddly bit. Because the paper is so thin, it's not the easiest thing to do. So if you've got thicker masking paper, that will work much better in this case because it's easier to poke those little bits out. Once all the bits have been popped out, you need to separate the mask from the wax paper. Again, be very careful because you don't want to tear your mask. And then you can put it back on the acetate sheet until you're ready to use it. A much easier way to create your stencil is to die cut your panel from normal weight basic white card. I'm then going to spray the reverse with some repositionable spray adhesive and this is specifically for stencils and it's called pixie spray. Now unfortunately you can't buy this in the UK, I ordered it from the US. You can get other repositionable sprays in the UK but I haven't tried any of them so I can't specifically recommend one. Now you just want to give a light coating all over on the reverse and then leave it for about a minute and it's ready to use. You'll be able to reuse this stencil many times, whereas the one I made with masking paper, I can probably only use two to four times. Once you've waited about a minute, you can start using it. And all you do is press it into place. And what I love about it is you don't get the edges curling up. It's really sound. And then when you finish doing what you need to do, you just peel it off and you can store it on wax paper or acetate. My front panel is normal weight basic white card and I'm going to use 
large post-it notes to block off the area where I don't want to put ink. Now I'm using my grid paper to help me line up this post-it note and I'm going half an inch in from the left hand edge. Then I'm leaving a gap of one inch and placing my second post-it note. Now I'm using my masking sheet stencil so it's quite flimsy and it's a little more difficult to place than one that you've created with cardstock. I'm using my grid paper again to centre it on that exposed area. I just want the middle piece of this stencil to be stuck down there. I've added some scrap paper underneath my project. I'm going to use Daffodil Delight ink and apply it with a blending brush. So I've picked up my ink, I've just taken off the excess on my scrap paper and then I can gently apply it over my stencil. It's always best to apply a little colour at a time until you get the result that you're after and then you can remove the stencil. And now I'm going to repeat the whole process for the opposite end of this panel. So I'll mark off my inch section where I want to transfer the pattern and then position my mask, making sure it's firmly pressed down and as centred as I can make it. And then I can apply my ink. Once I've completed this panel, I'll probably go on and make further panels using this same stencil until it doesn't stick anymore. I will get at least one more card out of it, but possibly two, maybe three. To add a little bit of texture to this panel, I'm going to run it through with the Subtle 3D embossing folder. Now I love this folder, it's my absolute favourite and I'm really sad that it's going at the end of this catalogue. I have a scrap piece of our Brights designer series paper here and I'm going to die cut this smallest butterfly twice from it. Now the design on the paper is retired but we still have the Brights packs just with new designs. The butterfly comes from the Brilliant Wings die set. I'm going to use the large butterfly die in this set to die cut two plain white butterflies and these will back my designer series paper ones which are in Pacific Point by the way. I love the effect that you get from the subtle embossing folder. I need to attach the detailed butterflies to the plain white butterflies. So all I'm doing is bending back the wings so the body becomes more prominent and I add the glue at that point and then I layer it onto the white butterfly and then I repeat this for the second one. This way the wings aren't stuck down and you can shape them when they're positioned on the card. My card base is in basic black and this is half a standard sheet of card scored in the middle and folded to create a landscape card. For inside the card I have a basic white mat and then I have a strip of black cardstock onto which I'm going to add some of the Bright's designer series paper. This is in Daffodil Delight. I'll then trim this down to size. I have my stenciled panel for the front of the card and I'm going to layer this onto a mat of Pacific Point. I've added mini dimensionals onto the back of my butterflies and normal dimensionals onto the back of both sentiment pieces.
to finish my card off I'm going to add a few basic rhinestones. Now these rhinestones that come in strips that I've cut down are actually a retired format. They now come as all individual rhinestones like the ones you can see on the left. And that's it, that's my card complete. And here's another look at my original card. I actually used So Saffron ink for the borders on this one. The butterflies are in Melon Mambo Bright's paper. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.